BlackFridayDeathCount.com. If this looks familiar to you, it's probably because it serves as the inspiration for the Pokemon Go Death Tracker. So what is it, you may ask? Like the Pokemon Go Death Tracker, this website compiles a list of every single Black Friday death and injury that has occurred to date. So for those of you who live outside of the United States, and I guess those of you who live inside of the United States but have lived under a rock, Black Friday is the day after Thanksgiving, with many stores having sales and specials and usually opening pretty early, around 5 a.m., 4 a.m., it keeps getting earlier. Whether or not these discounts are actually discounts is often very suspect, but people turn out in massive crowds to scrounge for deals anyway. Over the years, stores have been offering lower and lower prices and opening earlier and earlier to compete with other stores. Since 2005, it has been the busiest shopping day in the U.S. and has resulted in large, rowdy crowds, irritated and angry customers, and competition between buyers, to say the least. Over the years, Black Friday has resulted in a lot of controversy. First of all, the previously mentioned suspect deals, in addition to bait-and-switch schemes, extremely limited stock on discount items, and what we're going to be talking about here. Many, many injuries and deaths, even. Black Friday is actually often so dangerous that patrol cars stand and wait outside of larger retails throughout the day. Let's see exactly how this plays out by looking at the deaths and injuries themselves. As with the previous death tracker, this website is also very straightforward. You've got your deaths here on the left and your injuries here on the right. Below, you have a short explanation of each incident in chronological order. So let's go over every single death on the list here, and since there are too many to cover, some of the more notable injuries as well. Number 1. 2008. Worker dies at Long Island Walmart after being trampled in Black Friday Stampede. On Friday, November 28th of 2008, a Walmart in Long Island in New York was preparing for the usual Black Friday sale. The store was geared up to open at 5 a.m., and roughly about 2,000 people were eagerly waiting outside the doors to get in. Far too eagerly waiting. The crowd was chanting, push the doors in, as they pressed against the glass doors and windows. Hoping to slow the customers down, employees formed a human chain just inside the doors in preparation for them to open. The customers weren't above breaking glass, but surely they wouldn't plow out any people, right? When the doors opened, people began pouring in in an insane, frenzied stampede. As soon as the doors began to open, the crowd pushed through the doors as they opened, breaking them off the hinges. The people came flooding in, even jumping over barricades, with force to such a degree that employees had to rush for their safety. Completely caught off guard, many of the employees were pushed to the ground and trampled. Many others resorted to climbing on top of vending machines to avoid the surge of manic customers. After the stampede subsided, four employees were left injured, including a woman who was eight months pregnant, and one was dead. 34-year-old Jadimitai Damura was rushed and trampled by over 200 people. Officers who were on site rushed in and tried to give him CPR, but were soon trampled themselves, leaving them unable to get to him. He was rushed to the hospital, where it was revealed that he had died of a heart attack during all of the chaos. The store closed for a few hours after the stampede, but opened again shortly after. Understandably, witnesses to the scene called the customers savages. It was crazy, said an electronics department employee who was on scene during the stampede. The deals weren't even that good, he said. 2. 2008 Southern California Toys R Us shooting leaves two dead. On the same day as the previous case across the country in California, chaos erupted outside a Toys R Us store. A witness saw two women arguing in the checkout lane, each having a man with them. Puzzlingly, it didn't seem like they were even buying anything. One woman suddenly started punching the other. Her nose started bleeding. The man who was with her began to halfway pull out a gun, but pushed it back into his pocket. The other man, seeing this, pulled out his own gun and aimed it at the opposing couple. The other man, who originally put his gun away, then ran, but was blocked by a crowd of people at the doors. 
In a panic, he then ran into the electronics department where the other man fired at him. Screams of, he's got a gun, erupted throughout the store, but nobody could see what was going on due to the thick crowds. Predictably, chaos soon erupted. The injured man then pulled out his own gun and fired back as he ran toward the exit once again. He made it all the way to the registers and collapsed there. The first man to fire a shot was then hit by his spray of bullets as well, collapsing in turn. By the end, both men were dead, but luckily no others were hurt. Number 3. 2011. Black Friday. Target shoppers step over Walter Vance as he collapses, dies. Things were relatively safe, uh, scratch that, death-free for a few years after 2008. That is, until November 27, 2011. Walter Vance, a 61-year-old shopper with a previously known heart condition, collapsed while shopping on Black Friday at a Target in West Virginia. Other shoppers, more focused on the hot deals, completely ignored Walter as he lay on the floor, obviously in pain, and even went as far as stepping over him to get past. Luckily, we can't say that nobody tried to help the man. His wife commented that by the time the ambulances had arrived, six nurses had noticed him and were in the midst of performing CPR. But unfortunately, he ultimately did not survive. Number 4. 2012. Father charged in crash that killed daughters after Black Friday shopping. On November 23rd of 2012, at around 6.50 in the morning, Arvin Tandell, 48, was driving home from an all-nighter Black Friday shopping trip with his 34-year-old wife and his four daughters, ages from 12 up to 24. The four daughters were all crammed into a back seat that was only meant for three people. Not only that, but the third seat in the row was folded down in order to make room for all the stuff they had bought. The father was driving his Lexus SUV north on the highway near Palo Alto after getting only about three hours of sleep the previous night when, well, the predictable happened. Tandell was driving closer and closer to the white lane that separates the highway from the right-hand shoulder just before the accident causing surrounding drivers to find it concerning enough to move into the left lane to avoid him. A police car was on the right shoulder, assisting two drivers who had a broken down truck. Tandell's car careened closer to the police car and finally hit it on its left rear side, which sent the police car skidding into one of the two men standing outside their truck and also into the officer as well, severely injuring him. The whole accident was recorded on the dash cam of the patrol car. The family Lexus rolled over around seven times before finally stopping. The mother of the family, Yogita Tando, was brought to Stanford Hospital with severe injuries but ultimately survived. The youngest 12-year-old daughter had what they called moderate injuries. She and Payel Tando, the 22-year-old sister, were taken to Santa Clara Valley Medical Center in San Jose. The father himself, Arvin Tando, also suffered major injuries and was taken into Valley Medical. The two eldest daughters of the family were thrown from the car and injected out onto the highway. Nisha Tandell, who was 24, was pronounced dead at the scene. Her younger sister, Sheetal Tandell, 20, died later that night at Stanford Hospital. The two who died were not wearing seat belts. Official charges of misdemeanor vehicular manslaughter without gross negligence were given down to the father after the accident. Number 5. 2013. Teen returning home from Black Friday shopping fell asleep at the wheel, killed in wreck. The next case, taking place on November 29th of 2013, one year later, is reminiscent of the last case. A group of friends were heading back from Black Friday shopping at Concord Mills Mall in Concord, North Carolina, traveling south on South Point Road. 19-year-old Patrick Boyd was driving the crew home as everyone else in the car fell asleep tired from their shopping. However, the problem is, Patrick fell asleep too. He soon ran off the road, obviously not braking at all, and plowed right through a gas station sign. Patrick died from the accident. The four passengers, his girlfriend Shelby, age 18, and their friends Jacob, 17, Alexander, 20, and Christopher, 19, were all taken to the local hospital with injuries ranging from minor to severe, but they all did survive. 
Although these two cases didn't really take place during the shopping itself, they show that waking up at 3 a.m. to go perform an unusually exhausting and overwhelming task probably isn't the best thing to do right before getting behind the wheel of a car. Number 6, 2016. Black Friday kicks off with deadly shooting at New Jersey Mall. Back to the actual scene of the shopping itself, we come to a story that took place on November 25th of 2016, when a shooting took place outside a Macy's department store at the Hamilton Mall. The mall had closed at midnight and was all set to reopen at 6 a.m. for the Black Friday shoppers. While the shoppers were crowded outside the mall, waiting for their chance to stampede in at 6, at around 1 in the morning, a fight broke out between at least three men. Two people were shot, one fatally, in the parking lot. Damon Kahneman had been shot multiple times all over his body. He was pronounced dead at the scene when authorities arrived. His brother, Shadi Kahneman, was shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital and fortunately survived. Evidence markers were left all over the parking lot at the scene of the violence, where police towed away a silver SUV that was covered in bullet holes. The killer was never found. A street in Atlantic City was later named in Demond's honor. Number 7, 2016. Shopper opens fire, killing one over Walmart parking spot in Reno, Nevada. On that same day of November 25th, 2016, Another shooting actually took place at a Walmart in Reno, Nevada. Some Walmart locations choose to stay open overnight on Thanksgiving and start the sales at midnight, usually hoping to compete with online retailers like Amazon. On one of these nights, a fight erupted over an argument when one driver cut off another in the parking lot. 33-year-old Matthew McGraw got out of his car and assaulted the other man with a metal baton, breaking his window and hitting him in the face. That man then pulled out a gun and shot McGraw in self-defense, killing him. The shooter then left the scene in a panic, but later turned himself in to cooperate with officers. As he was licensed to carry the gun and shot McGraw in self-defense after a clear assault case with a weapon that many witnesses had seen, no charges were pressed. Number 8, 2016. San Antonio man helped a woman being beaten in a Walmart parking lot, shot dead. On the same day, November 25th, 2016, another shooting took place in a Walmart, seriously? In San Antonio. Isidro Zarati had dropped off his wife to go do some Black Friday shopping at around 4 in the morning. While on his way out, he saw a fight taking place. A man was holding a woman by her hair and was very publicly beating her up. Zarati pulled his car up to the two and yelled to the man, take your hands off of her. That's all he did and that's all it took for the other man to pull out a gun and fire a flurry of bullets towards him. One of the bullets shot him in the neck, and he passed away shortly after. An unnamed woman who was in the car with him was also injured by shrapnel. A stray bullet then flew off scene and hit a third woman in the parking lot. Both of them survived their injuries. The subject was identified as Talese Mandan Juarez, 21, who was pursued by a police helicopter and caught about 10 miles away. He was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and sentenced to life in prison. Number 9, 2018. One dead, two wounded, including 12-year-old girl, in Alabama mall shooting. At the River Chase Galliera, the largest enclosed mall in Alabama, chaos erupted around midnight on November 23rd of 2018. This was one of those occasions where the store stayed open overnight to allow people to start waiting for the sales. Actually taking place on Thanksgiving night at around 11 p.m., there was a fight that broke out between two men, an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old. The 21-year-old man happened to have a gun with him. It's unknown how the argument played out, but as you can assume, the 21-year-old ended up shooting at the 18-year-old, hitting him twice in the torso. The 18-year-old man was unarmed. Bullets ended up hitting and wounding a nearby 12-year-old girl as well. A police officer who was on scene, for good reason apparently, ended up chasing down the gunman and confronting him. In this confrontation, the gunman was shot and killed. He was shot three times in the back. But was it really that simple? The 18-year-old man was taken to the hospital in serious condition and actually did survive. Luckily, the 12-year-old girl didn't have life-threatening injuries and was in stable condition, surviving in the end as well. 
It could have been a lot worse, though, as the bullet was lodged very near her spine. The mall was closed for a couple of hours and reopened for Black Friday shopping before sunrise. Seems pretty cut and dry, right? Well, that was until a little bit later. What started out as a fight at a mall turned into a gun battle. Police raced in and opened fire themselves, but now they're saying it appears they shot and killed the wrong man. That's right. It turned out that Emantic Fitzgerald Bradford Jr., the man the police originally shot, wasn't the person who shot the two victims. They believed he was involved in the altercation between the two men in some way, but that's about it. It turns out that Bradford was actually a soldier, and that's why he had a weapon. If anything, he was likely trying to help people. Aaron Martez de Quan Brown, 23, the man believed to have actually committed the shooting, was found a few months later and arrested. He was charged with two cases of first-degree assault. He was later released under a $60,000 bond and, at the time of writing this, remains under house arrest. But sometime down the road, he will face up to 20 years in prison for each case of assault. This story really deserved a whole video on its own. I kind of wish I knew that coming into this. I mean, this could have been its own video, but, uh, yeah. Number 10, 2018. Man, 27, shot to death in parking lot in South Keys, Ottawa. So this case actually takes place up in Canada, in Ottawa. Thank you, Canada, for taking the heat off the U.S. for at least a couple minutes. One day after our previous case in a South Keys shopping mall in Ottawa, 27-year-old Yodis Barkdale was shot multiple times in what police thought was a targeted attack. In a packed, bustling parking lot, the attacker fired off a flurry of bullets in Barkadel's direction. The victim was rushed to the hospital, what was soon pronounced dead. Now, Yotis is not unknown to the police. He and his two brothers were fairly well known within the department. One of his brothers, Ishmael Barkadel, was arrested alongside him in 2014 in an unspecified bust. His oldest brother, Mohammed, was a well-known crip and crack dealer. He was awaiting trial on two charges of first-degree murder. Police believe the brothers' gang activity likely had something to do with the targeted attack. This shooting is still unsolved and no arrests have been made. Stores remained open and people continued shopping. Number 11, 2020. Two shot, killed at Northern California Mall on Black Friday. And now we have arrived at the most recent Black Friday death. One year ago in 2020, November 27th to be exact, at a Northern California mall at around 6 p.m., Black Friday shopping was continuing as usual when suddenly chaos erupted and workers heard multiple gunshots being fired off. Up to a dozen, they said. Everyone started panicking, running, and doing their best to evacuate the stores. Luckily, due to lockdown, the number of people was much lower than usual that year. An argument had erupted between two parties. Two brothers, aged 17 and 19, and a third man, an 18-year-old. The argument escalated to the point that all three of the men who were involved pulled their guns and started firing. It isn't known who fired first, and police haven't confirmed that they are even for sure that the 17 and 19-year-olds had fired their guns. The circumstances of the argument are still fairly murky. When the police arrived, they found the 19-year-old man dead and the 17-year-old boy critically wounded. The 17-year-old was rushed to the hospital, but unfortunately succumbed to his injuries later on. Police believe that this attack was specifically targeted as well, but didn't want to compromise the investigation by divulging any more information than that. The killer fled the scene. By the end of the month, DeMario Beck, the killer, was arrested for the crime. The father of the two boys forgave Beck and called for an end to the violence. Now, that is all of the actual, on-record, Black Friday deaths. On the counter, anyway. I mean, if you find more that aren't on the counter, feel free to tell me in the comments. I will listen. But there are also a lot of very notable injuries here as well. Some of them are all the way up in the double digits for a single entry, and I mean, with a number like 117, the, the numbers have got to be coming from somewhere. So, let's give it a look. Number one. How about we start with this incident in 2006? At a shopping center in Torrance, California, it was decided that dropping gift cards from the ceiling on balloons for shoppers to catch would be a cool game. 
However, very little effort was put into the crowd control aspect, it seems, as the crowd surged towards the gift cards and began pushing, shoving, and attacking each other. It resulted in an elderly woman being sent to the hospital and nine other shoppers suffering minor wounds. 2. In 2011 in Los Angeles, a woman brought a bottle of pepper spray with her on her Black Friday shopping, specifically to use as a weapon to get ahead of other customers. Trying to get some discounted video game consoles and Bratz dolls, she sprayed a whopping 20 other shoppers with the pepper spray. She sprayed so much that the spray started filling the entire area and injuring others. Elizabeth Micaias, 32, turned herself in the next day for the attack. She claimed it was self-defense after two people were aggressive towards her sons, ignoring that she injured 20. She didn't face charges, and instead, she actually threatened to sue Walmart for lackluster security. Irony. For number three, actually on the same day as that previous entry, an off-duty police officer used pepper spray on shoppers at a Walmart in Kingston, North Carolina. He even injured the same amount of people, 20, as he made what he called a small puff of pepper spray in order to gain crowd control over an unruly crowd. People in the crowd claimed he rained down pepper spray over the entire crowd, and their word holds a little bit more weight when you see the total injury count. Uh, four, and sadly, let's just say, many, many other injury counts were from shootings that didn't happen to result in any deaths, but were Black Friday shootings nonetheless. It seems that bringing a gun Black Friday shopping is unfortunately pretty common. And now, drum roll. We arrive to the honorable mentions. Like the Pokemon Go death tracker, these are more interesting entries that don't really fit in with the others, but deserve a shout out on this list. For example, let's start with the first one. So honorable mention number one, in Zanesville, Ohio, 2010, a Joanne Fabric store was shut down due to an employee ending their own life in the store that day just before opening. Number two, in 2014, one worker actually killed another worker at a Costco in New York. Two workers had an argument that resulted in one killing the other with a box cutter. This was before the store opened that day, and there was no mention of the shop closing afterwards. Number three, on the same day at a Nordstrom store in Chicago, an employee was shot by her stalker ex-boyfriend while working. He then turned the gun on himself. Number four, on the same day, goddamn, three in a row, two ex-employees of an American Eagle Outfitters store in Fort Worth, Texas, beat up, strangled, and subsequently set an assistant store manager on fire in order to steal thousands of dollars of Black Friday sales, which in total amounted up to about $50,000. Unluckily for them, they were caught and their bonds were set for $500,000 each. Number five, and last but not least to the final entry. Similar to in the Pokemon Go death tracker video, a man died of a heart attack while shopping at a Walmart in Phoenix City, Alabama possibly due to fatigue from the event. And that concludes our list. Thank you for sticking around, everyone. This list turned out being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Happy belated Thanksgiving, and as I'm actually filming this before Black Friday, there may have been some incidents this year that will be added to the list, and if there are, let me know. I'll be sure to put them down in the comments and pin it just for the sake of completion. So if you thought this was interesting, please give it a like, and if you enjoy content like this, feel free to subscribe, I, I do a lot of it. I'll be linking the Pokemon Go death tracker, which is very similar, down in the description, and uh, what am I forgetting? If you'd like to support this channel as well, I do have a Patreon account, and speaking of which, shout out to my top patrons. Adrian Lawley, Matthew D'Amateo, Murray Joel Sanchez, David McLaughlin, Marsh, Buffa Zerk, Lonro, Itaya, Jewel Movchan, Lori Tayaba, Kim Peak, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Skooky Main, Jackie, Lavender Wise, and Teresa Ferguson. You know what I'm gonna say. You guys are the best. Once again, thank you.
Have a good night.